president takes his push for tax reform on the road today, traveling to the Midwest to make his pitch to the American people. The visit marks Trump's second time to Missouri to sell his plan. And while he says the bill will be a boon to middle-income families that will spark economic growth, protesters shouted, shame on you. And critics warned, buyer beware, because they say both the House version that passed just two weeks ago and the Senate version that made it through just last evening will disproportionately help the rich to get richer. No. The bill will be sent to the full Senate for a possible Biden. vote no. tomorrow. So will they strike a deal or hit a dud? And here to break it down is Patricia Cohen, the New York Times reporter who covers the national economy. Patricia, welcome to Metro Focus. Hi, thank you for having me. So this piece of legislation seems to have two different narratives going with it. One is that the president himself, who was taking this to the people to sell it, is calling it a big, beautiful tax break, whereas opponents are calling it the Donor Relief Act. Who's closer to the truth? Well, it, it is a big, beautiful tax break from the perspective of businesses and corporations. Uh, Clearly, the Republicans said that they had two goals in this, in, in putting forward this tax overhaul. One was to give relief to businesses, and the other was to uh, deliver what they called a middle class tax cut. And it's very clear uh, in every independent analysis pretty much backs this up, that the middle class part of that has been sacrificed in order for business. So there's huge cuts for corporations, for uh, other kinds of businesses that are organized differently, uh, whether they're partnerships or proprietorships. Uh, and even though there are families that will see a tax cut in the next year or two, by mm -hmm. the time you go out 10 years, which is the period over which the tax bill covers, basically pretty much every family earning 75000 or less will be seeing a tax increase mm -hmm. at that point. So you're basically, if you look at the bill as a whole, you're increasing taxes on individuals in order to give tax breaks to business. Well, it's funny that you should bring that up because one of the things that has been touted in this legislation is that because this tax break gives so much more money to corporations, they'll use that to reinvest in the economy. They'll be bringing jobs back to America, people's salaries will go up so they can afford that tax increase. Has that been proven to be true? Can historians say that's true? The question of, you know, trickle-down economics, which is basically the animating idea behind this tax bill, really has a very mixed record. Um, obviously, it was very popular during the Reagan administration, but in terms of what that policy has actually achieved, it has never really uh, stimulated the economy in the way that its supporters or its uh, advocates have promised. And we've seen that uh, time and again. And in fact, one of the things that I think is really disturbing just in terms of the process, regardless of whether you think the tax uh, plan as put out by the Republicans is good or bad, uh, it is being rushed through at a breakneck speed. In fact, we don't even have the analysis from Congress's own Joint Committee on Taxation to tell us yet what the impact is going to be on the economy. So if you think about this, you know, passing this really mammoth tax bill that is going to affect every single American in all kinds of decisions one makes about whether it's health care, whether it's what kind of job you're going to take. Mm -hmm. um, and there really has not been very much debate or analysis of it. That, I think, is what is, is also troubling a lot of critics. And that is one of the things that I understand is also in not necessarily uh, a skinny repeal of uh, the Affordable Care Act, but a removal of the mandate to require all Americans to have health care. That's one of the many little things that exactly. seems to have been sewn into this. One of the pieces in this legislation that's gotten a lot of attention from the press has been the estate tax. Why has that become such a hot point for people? I mean, the estate tax is kind of a really fascinating, <laughs> uh, you know, public policy case study. Uh, we've had some kind of estate tax going back. Uh, in fact, one of the, the, the first champions of the idea was Teddy Roosevelt, uh, who said it was kind of not the uh, American way to have wealth inherited down, large estates uh -huh. uh, inherited down. Um, 
I think that most people really just don't understand. It was very successfully rebranded mm -hmm. by the Republicans as a death tax. Um, everybody dies. Right, everybody mm -hmm. dies. The, the, the misconception about it is twofold. Number one, as you said, it really uh, affects very few people. For a couple, the first $11 million, essentially, of your estate is not taxed. You can pass that down, give it to anyone you want. There's not a single dollar paid on the first $11 million. So it only at the moment, and that this is in current law, mm -hmm. um, affects those uh, where a couple has an estate worth $11 million, more than $11 million, essentially. Um, last year, I think that was, if I remember, about 5,200 estates actually even came, would hit that threshold. And remember, even if you have eleven thousand and twenty dollars, uh, excuse me, eleven million, uh, yeah, 11 million and yeah. twenty dollars, only the twenty dollars extra over eleven is being taxed. So the first eleven million, even for those who have more money, you're still there's still no tax on that. Um, so it really is something that affects. I think it's zero point two percent of Americans, uh, American estates at this moment. Well, of course, as you mentioned earlier, this is moving at a breakneck pace through Congress. And I'm wondering if there's any chance that this final vote might get pushed back to December 8th, which of course, as we know, the date when the government has to refund itself and there's a shutdown, is that a smart card to play for them or not? So, so basically, the, the Democrats have, at the end, very little uh, leverage here. Mm -hmm. Republicans control both houses. Um, I think it's very clear that uh, if there's a shutdown, which uh, President Trump has tweeted about, and people are not sure how seriously he's meant that, whether that's a kind of negotiating tactic or not, uh, that maybe we should have a shutdown. Um, I think Republican leaders in Congress certainly see that that would be uh, a really bad thing for the Republican Party, particularly when they control both um, houses. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but essentially we're at a point here where the Democrats just are not in the majority and they have very little uh, leverage. No. All right. Well, um, it, we'll certainly be seeing what happens, especially with this uh, bill going to the full Senate. Uh, are there enough votes to get it through right now? Well, there's still a few uh, senators who have not committed. Uh, John McCain is mm -hmm. one. But the some of the holdouts last night indicated that their concerns were addressed in the bill that ultimately passed. Uh, out of committee. And so I think it's looking more and more likely. Uh, not every single Republican senator has signed on, but if they do, then certainly it will pass. Patricia, thank you so much for joining us on Metro Focus and of course giving us some insight into what might be happening behind the scenes with the movement of this legislation. We'll of course be looking for your reporting to find out what happens next. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.